uh, consultant, and Senator Irungo Kangata, who is also the deputy whip in the Senate. And we want to go straight into some of the things that, well, basic revelations, let me call them that over the week. But before that, a quick reminder of that question that we'd like to find out from you, because that's where we want to start off from. And that is in regards to graft. Do you think Kenya is winning the war on corruption? Do you think Kenya is winning the war on corruption? I'll just read some of your comments that are coming through. Too much PR, public relations, uh, going for the small fish instead of the big fish. It's like they are not fighting. It's just doing it to keep Kenyans busy. I can guarantee that no one will be jailed, and this is what the judges will say. Due to lack of sufficient evidence, we find the accused not guilty. Uh, Fobo says that winning battles may be, but the war is lost. So maybe the question should be, are we winning the war? on corruption and that's what we're asking this morning not when we are getting to lip service according to events so uh let me come to the panel remember you're welcome to participate and let us know what your thoughts are the hashtag is ktn morning express but let me start with you irungo kangata we also have a revelation of approximately one million shillings per day could be being lost in the sgr and this is apparently due to a ticketing scam the sgr of course has been on the spotlight for several negative reasons as as it has been for positive but this time it is a ticketing scam that uh, is being followed up your thoughts on this especially given that we are paying a very fair penny a high price to have that sgr uh, put in place for us in kenya one uh, it's quite sad that uh, we can be losing such kind of uh, humongous amounts of money uh, as you have correctly stated that uh, we are paying a lot of money every month we pay one billion to the chinese to run that system and therefore when you have a situation where we are losing our money to some few individuals to me that is bad it is wrong and uh, and therefore it was quite good that uh, that scandal was exposed and action has been taken we must also congratulate those police officers who refused to be bribed they were being offered five hundred thousand to look the other way and they ignored and therefore I think the first thing we need to do as Parliament is to hasten that bill which is lying before Duale, which bill is proposing that um, if you're a whistleblower, you need to get about 10% of the amount that you have been able to raise uh, to, to, to whistleblow. I say that because now, like those policemen, uh, most likely uh, we are not for their own personal high moral integrity. They could have been sued by that money. It's a lot of money, 500,000. And therefore, uh, to ensure this battle against corruption, this war against corruption is embedded, is institutionalized, we need to rush that Whistleblowers Act mm. to give incentives to people who are whistleblowing. Number two, personally, I think we are on the positive trajectory. We never used to hear of such scandals. The fact that they are coming up is, is a manifestation that there's indeed this war is bearing fruit. And, and, and I can tell you, because I interact with a lot of government officers, there is some fear that has now uh, pervaded in the corridors of power. And that fear is positive. It shows that uh, before you decide to steal, you have to think again. And uh, also congratulations to the members of the Fourth Estate. They have been in the forefront in uh, unveiling these scandals. And to me, it shows if you can be able to sustain that war, Kenya is going to go places. We the may, right I foresee maybe in the next three or four years, if we sustain the pressure, then Kenya will be a changed place going forward. All right, uh, Michael Agwanda, Kenyans, we are normally very quick to castigate and uh, throw aspersions to the government, especially matters corruption. Now, this one, it is more or less private individuals. Again, we seem not to be very quick to praise those who are of high moral value to a point where there are some who possibly would say, I was listening to a discussion, there are some who are saying, how dumb are these police officers who refuse to take a bribe? Now, this is nothing to do with government. It's nothing to do with government institutions. It's just the way we Kenyans are wired. I really don't think all Kenyans are corrupt. <clears throat> and if you find an individual who says, how dumb are those police officers for refusing to take uh, 500,000 a bribe, they do not know that they're sinking their country and that it is them paying for that loan. That's something that people forget. People forget that when the government takes loans, uh, whether it's Eurobond loan, whether it is China loan, or whatever it is, that it is hard, their sweat that will pay for that loan. And if anything, it is their children and their children's children that will 
could stay for that long. Even the people that are involved in the corruption, especially in this mega scandal, they have never thought about it to this extent, mm -hmm. that actually they will pay for that loan, whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. The only difference is they'll probably have a lot of money that they will not feel that they're paying that loan, but ultimately they will pay that loan. Mm -hmm. Now, Mike, the only thing that hurts me in this case is that we are having an exorbitant loan coming from China, and we know that China is hugely uh, getting into serious corruption in this country. I have said it here in the media before that China is hugely being corrupted in many African countries, and that's just one of the strategies. We've said that, but we've been, you know, called names sometimes, but we know now it's coming out that it's not only only Kenyans that are involved in this scam in the SGR, but it's also the Chinese involved because the Chinese are the ones running that ticketing system. It is so bad to an extent that, Mike, today, if you wanted to get a ticket from SGR, you may not be able to get it from their portal, but when you walk across the street of Nairobi, you will get it at two, three times the price. And the question is, why do we have a good thing that was actually a promise to reduce the cost and the speed under which one can travel from Mombasa to Nairobi, only to be brought into the hands of the cartels? Mm -hmm. That the cartels, that will not only make sure that there are no tickets, and those Cartels are not people from outside. They are SGR people and they are Kenya Railway Corporation people. They are Kenya Railways they are Corporation people involved. I remember when the former CEO uh, of Kenya Railways uh, you know, was involved in the discussion about the discrimination that was taking place against the Kenyan, Kenyan brothers, he came and condemned that and he said he did not have the information. Only a few months down the line for him to be charged in a court of law because of corruption. Because they're looking at these things and they look the other way. They get the money and once they get the money, they don't care about our Kenyan brothers, they would rather support the, 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 the foreigners who are involved in corruption and giving them huge sums of money. This is what is happening. We are having a situation we will have to pay over 350 million to a Chinese government, but now they're even stealing that very money that is supposed to pay them for the loan. And so the question is, when are we ever going to pay for this loan? One billion to manage SGR from Nairobi to Kisu, I mean, Nairobi to Mombasa, every month we may never be able to pay for this loan in 100 years, unless Kenyans just become so adamant and say, look, if you brought the SGR here, and uh, you, you have to be involved in ensuring that you know how much we're getting. Yes, we will involve you so that there's a bit of transparency, but we must be involved in collecting this money, not to allow you to collect it and steal it and then constantly declare loss. Until when? So that you come and auction our country? Absolutely not. This should not be accepted. In fact, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that is bargaining for this thing, Sometimes I wonder what kind of lawyers they used to allow these people so much leverage, even to dictate how much they should be able to, 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 to employ. And, and if you saw when the Ministry of, 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 of Interior was deporting people, Chinese were top of the number that were deported into their country. Why? Because they come here and they will so much power because of the money that they're giving to our government officials and corrupting their way into every department, they become the biggest entrepreneur mm. in this country. If this is not checked with parliament and the Senate, this country is doomed. Irongo Kangata, do you think Kenya got itself a raw deal with the SGR? There's been very little positive uh, that has been spoken about it. And maybe you, this might be viewed as teething problems, but do you feel like maybe we possibly got ourselves a raw deal, given that we have such a high amount of money that we're supposed to pay back, yet it seems not to be working in favor of Kenyans? We already, have, we already, be, we already threatened at one point uh, with the phase two, uh, with one of the leaders saying that if you stop importing our fish, then that is tantamount or equal to economic sabotage. No, I disagree. I think SGR is a positive thing. Let me say that the idea of SGR was first mooted by the administration of Kibaki. It is contained in our Vision 2030 document. And uh, the whole rationale makes sense then, and it does make sense now, which is that uh, we need to move our goods faster. We need to ensure our rail is uh, 
in conformity with international standards. The, the old railway network was outdated uh, in terms of its size, in terms of its shape, and therefore it does not conform with the current uh, standards of railways. And uh, we have seen the positive outcomes of SGR. In terms of uh, passengers, now you cannot book uh, that train uh, immediately. It takes a lot of, is it a week? Uh, in some instances, almost a For month. For December, it's actually a month. It's a month. It shows that in indeed advance. there was a need. There was a demand. There the was demand a demand. Is, uh, yeah, there's a demand. If at all, in, uh, in terms of cargo, Initially, we did not see good uptake of cargo, but now there is a lot of uptake of cargo. In fact, the, uh, the trucks that are going to that direction, taking cargo, have increased uh, by almost three times. Mm. So therefore, and, and, and also in terms of its repayment, in the next two years, we shall no longer go to the exchequer to pay for that railway. It shall be paying itself. And maybe within the next 10 years, we will have cleared that loan. So it's a positive investment. Mm -hmm. it is the, it's an investment which, in my own opinion, uh, as we go forward, we'll see it was positive. It's going to assist us to go to the next level of uh, uh, development. Uh, and, and also, uh, look at also from this also angle that, uh, one, it has created employment. There are so many people who do not have employment now they can get into that system. Also, it is opening up that region. Uh, we have stopovers from Nairobi to Mombasa. We have several stopovers, Kinakonsa City, places like uh, Water, whatever, Makindu. So therefore, you are going to spur development in that region, which, which region was fairly neglected. And also, uh, compare railway and uh, motoring. Or motoring tends to be more expensive as opposed to railway. Railway, cost of moving good or even a person using railway is almost half mm -hmm. eh, the, the price of moving a person using uh, motoring. So therefore, it's a positive investment. Mm -hmm. And I have no doubt that uh, we shall be able to recoup that investment. All right. Michael Agwanda, it's evident that the government cannot win the war on corruption on its own we also have to own it as Kenyans and be enforcers as it were. What incentives do you think can be introduced to ensure that we win this war? I think Senator here mentioned one of them, and that could be a reward for whistleblowers, those who come up with information that get people convicted in regards to uh, uh, corruption can get a certain percentage, perhaps, of the money recovered. What are the incentives do you think would encourage Kenyans to participate and become enforcers of corruption? Because the only way that would be done is when all of us become agents of change. I think the reason why Kenyans are not really gaining better track in fighting corruption in this country is that the government is secretive with what it does. When they go to do Eurobond contract, they never tell Kenyans what they do with that money. The moment the government is not open up with the monies they have, then the people will assume that they have so much and that so much has got into senior government pockets. And so for that reason, we need to say that if the government want transparency and accountability, it must start from them. Secondly, whistleblower. People need to be rewarded for whistleblowing. We've seen in this country where whistleblowers have actually been taken to court eventually. Some of them have been killed because they, they, they talked about something against the government. They need to be protected and they need to be rewarded for whistleblowing and that can only happen when we take that matter to parliament and it is enacted into a law so that it is. Witness protection is another thing. We have people in this country that if you go to a court of law, you're a witness of a scandal that took place. Before long, you are either dead or uh, perhaps somebody is already suing you for something else. Witness protection should not just be given huge protection in this country, but even if it means you being taken out of the country in the interest of your country and in the interest of your safety, that should be done. Even if it means 24 hour security given to you by the government, that should be done. Even if it means the government paying you some money every month because perhaps you're not able to go to work that has become a little bit volatile because everybody's seeing you as a traitor that should be done but if you have witness 
people, I mean, people, witnesses going to court, and then, uh, you know, before long they are fired, then you have issues. And another thing that must happen is the government must work with the private agencies, with private organizations. All these mega scandals and deals, the conduits of money, whether it is NYS or Ministry of Health and many, many other places, it goes through somebody who is not working with the government. How do you ensure that this is done? Well, we all know that all the big tenders in this country, before you even get a job, perhaps you'll have to pay about 10%. Majority of the government tenders, you'll have to pay 10% to an individual sitting in that office before they open your tender and perhaps giving it to you. Yeah. I really think that we have serious values in this country. We have uh, you know, men and women of integrity, whether they're lawyers, whether they're judges, whether they're of passes of integrity that can sit in certain boards. The question that everybody is asking that if you have NCPD or National uh, Produce and Cereal Board, who are the people sitting in the board? And when you have a community, one community having more numbers in that board than the other you know, communities in the country, then, then it, a it is a recipe for disaster because you know these people will collude, speak their own native language in that board meeting, decide on who to give the but when you mix boards so that you have all manner of people in this board and different professions and different values in those boards, not necessarily that they're coming from reef to valley and therefore they all have to be in NCPD. Let me tell you, farmers in this country come from all corners of this country and not only one community must sit in a board like that. And so when one scandal happened, you've seen some names, even some, you know, if, if it's NCPD, there are more names from one community and you're hurting those communities because you're setting them for failure. You're setting them for corruption. And that is deliberate. We must also look at our institutions and say, how are our institu institutions governed? Who are the people sitting in those boards? Are they people of diverse background, experience, but also of integrity, or are they politically connected? Mm -hmm. And so we put them there. All right. And another area that, of course, would help Kenyans in the fight on graft is the judiciary. We already mentioned this, but Irungo Kangata, the judiciary also becomes a major player in this because those who are brought before the courts then are in the hands of the courts of course again hoping that the evidence that is presented before them is um, of solid evidence that would get them convictions but uh, the CJ is also on record admitting that there needs to be work done in the judiciary. What are your thoughts in regards to what needs to be changed in the judiciary to ensure that that is also airtight? Yes, uh, number one, uh, we may have to consider uh, whether we need to have uh, more judges so that we can have cases which are heard faster. There has been a proposal that corruption cases be heard on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, if I'm not wrong, there's a certain provision to that effect. Uh, that way you will have these people being processed in a more faster manner. Uh, and therefore, uh, CJ needs to sit down together with other stakeholders, see how that can be affected, cases being heard on a day-to-day -day basis. The other possible reform uh, in judiciary, in my own opinion, is an issue of accountability. Uh, of course, Parliament has never exercised that part in a very strong manner. It appears we allow judicial officers to, to do as they wish. But maybe we can come up with a, a report which can be brought before Parliament for debate to see, uh, to, to expose, uh, to expose or to, to, to uncover the opaque manner within, within which uh, some of these matters are being heard. That is, that report can capture, for instance, how many convictions in matters corruption that have been done by judiciary. Who was at fault? Was it a failure by DPP to bring cogent evidence? Or is it a case where the matter is being dismissed, but when you have a look at it, uh, the dismissal was not quite justified? So uh, the other issue is uh, concerning appellate procedure. Uh, appellate procedure in this country tends to be quite long-winded. It takes a long time. A good example, if you can recall, there is that case concerning two persons, that is a former cabinet uh, minister who was charged, who, 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 uh, who is supposed to be extradited to the UK to, save, to face corruption charges together with the former KPLC MD. 
up to now those cases have never been determined. Uh, the, the matter is still pending to the best of my knowledge, I think in the Supreme Court, where a Supreme Court has to decide who is supposed to initiate that process, either the AG or the DPP. So we need those cases to be, exp to be hastened. So therefore, the appealed procedure in concerning matter corruption should be made easier, to be made more faster. And uh, the, the, the other area, in my own opinion, is the issue of um, investigating uh, some of these suspicious judges who may be working in cohorts with some of these corrupt people. And uh, these reports can be given to us as parliament by NSIS. They should tell us, uh, do you think a certain judge is in working in cohorts with some of these corrupt people? Of course, in some jurisdictions, they have gone into to extreme ways. I don't know whether Kenya can consider adopting those extreme ways, mm. which include, for instance, being voted for. I know in America, they vote mm. for judges. I know in Japan, they vote for judges. Mm. That way, you ensure that the person seated there as a judge has some legitimacy. He has some an eye to the public views. Of course, some people have argued that can make us more partisan. Uh, and instead of being independent, they, they are pushing partisan interest. But I think uh, that negative compared with a situation where you find people doing bad because they know at the end of the day you will not take them anywhere because they have protected security of tenor to me is an issue that's to me I think to more problematic. Right. Michael Aguanda, your thoughts, and especially in regards to cartels. We've heard this name many times, and of course, even in the judiciary, it is not excluded from having cartels, meaning we have people on the inside and on the outside. And remember, there was a report also last week that uh, there are also some workers within the judiciary. You have, for instance, security guards, you know, writing reports that are not within their job description, which would just make it a very uh, delicate place to have the wrong hands in. I mean, we've had of cases where files disappear. We've had of cases where certain papers are missing even after they've been admitted in court. So this needs to be dealt with. But the issue of cartels. In every community, you find a mad person, whether it is in the legal fraternity or it is among the judges. It is the people working and helping the judges to do their work. You find some people who are corrupt and have known their ways. Wrong. Some of these judges, some of them are corrupt. Uh, you you definitely find corrupt judges, and you find corrupt lawyers. Who knows the corrupt judges? And they will tell you for this case to be done, uh, uh, you know, in, in a faster manner, you pay this X amount of money, and yeah. this should be done, and it should be done within a short time. Um, the, the question that everybody uh, is is wondering about the 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 judiciary is the judiciary has really been a help in more recent years and i think during uh, uh, president uhuru's time they've been given a lot of money uh, to to make a lot of changes and we saw dr mtunga made a number of changes in the judiciary which we even uh, honorable kibaki i mean president kibaki really did a lot pumped a lot of money there. The question that the judiciary keeps on coming out to, to talk about is that we are understaffed and, uh, and then we need more judges. And I wonder why the government can never hear this so, uh, you know, publicly so that they can put more judges there and, and, and then they can also uh, start, you know, looking at the, the amount of work that each judge is able to do. Give them an expectation within three months, within six months, within one year. And you know, when we talk about uh, changes, uh, as, as uh, um, Honorable Morigo Kangata is referring to in the US, you, you find that the judges there, uh, you, when you have a state, uh, all the cases will be done and concluded on without transferring those cases either to Nairobi or to another county. But in our system, we still have Supreme Court here, we still have Court of Appeal here, and you find cases in Migori being brought to Nairobi, and because of various reasons, you know, this does not happen in a place where judges are elected. And when they're elected, and if the community feels that the judgments were not done in accordance to the law, the next day you're out of that place. But again, we must know that these judges, even though we may want to vet them so well, mm. but when you have, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the committee that, that runs, uh, you know, the, 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 the judiciary being, uh, you, know, in, you know, having 
men and women that are politically inclined to either the president or to somebody else, then you water down the integrity of the oh. management and administration of the judiciary. But I want to say something again. When it comes to matters of investigation, I think if there is a place where United States of America succeeds well, it is in the investigation department. How I wish that instead of the IG talking about us winning this war and the corruption in the police and all this stuff, that they will invest hugely in the DCI's office, pay some of them a lot of money, give them resources like their own vehicles and tell them, look, you have this amount of money. And this murder, we must get to the end of it. This corruption, we must get to the end of it. If you have police officers going to investigate 8 billion lost in, uh, in, uh, in NYS, you saw what happened with the police officer who was investigating that very case, being now involved in the web, and then this guy is walking to his house, and the kind of money is investigating 8 billion is money that he will never even imagine in a hundred or a thousand years. Why would he get another eight hundred thousand dollars or a million and go home so we need to invest hugely on the, uh, the dci's office and when we do that and and, and nice as well uh, and nis as well and and we know that the, the truth of the matter is we've been investing so much on anti-corruption, ESCC, but we've also known cases like in Oma Bay where basically uh, ESCC is being uh, you know, accused of colluding with chief officers and, and getting a lot of money out of it. And so there, the corruption in Oma Bay can never find can itself never find in the it. limelight. Mm -hmm. We know that. And, but when you invest so hugely in the DCI's department, and say, look, if you want a car, we have a car for you, 24-7. If you want money for this case, this is the money for you. I think corruption will come down. Will come to an end. All right. And as we get to uh, the sunset of this uh, conversation, Inuko Kangata matters politics and uh, the deputy president yesterday uh, in a church service, um, you know, sort of mentioned that uh, he is the only constitutionally recognized assistant to the president, which is true. Uh, but this sounded like he was throwing jibes at the, uh, you know, um, uh, former prime minister, uh, Raila Odinga and Kalonzo Musioka, who recently said that, uh, Kalonzo Musioka specifically, saying that he would be the president's errand boy. And the deputy president was very clear. He said, I am the only uh, constitutionally recognized errand boy. Uh, is that, do you think... Um, I, as much as he says he's not campaigning for 2022, it sounds to me like he's really creating space for himself. No, I think what he said is what is provided for under the law, that indeed he is the only constitutionally provided for. And that's true, Karen. it is under the law, yeah. Irungu Kangata, but of course looking at the political spin that that, you know, he was trying to get across. No, you know, well, I don't see anything wrong with that statement. Eh? It is a factual statement and also reflects the political reality of which we are living in. But that does not mean other people cannot come and also become uh, Watu Amikono, <laughs> who are serving His Excellency President Uru Kenyatta. But uh, to me, I think President Uru Kenyatta is a political genius. He is a political genius that he has been able to new to opposition, that he has been able to have a situation where every major political force in this country is gravitating around him. Do you think that's healthy him. for the country? Yes, it is. It is. Because now um, opposition for opposition's sake is not positive. Uh, you will have a situation people making a lot of noise, people fighting in the street, uh, business going down. But now you can see we have peace and tranquility. We have now people talking issues, people are debating issues. Even parliament, it has become more robust. I recall the VAT bill discussion in parliament. You could not whip members along party lines. People are discussing those issues in an objective manner. Uh, people are thinking handshake is going to muzzle right. parliament, but incidentally, it is the opposite. Now people are looking at issues in an objective manner mm -hmm. without fear of being whipped this direction or the other direction. Mm -hmm. Look at the discussion on to that gender. Members of parliament, they are looking at that issue in an objective manner. So handshake, in my own opinion, instead of muzzling uh, independent institution like parliament, it has enabled parliamentarians to become more independent. And, and, and also it has made uh, Kenya to be peaceful, mm -hmm. which is also positive for the business people. People can now invest without fear that uh, their business are going to be stoned. The people can now come to this country, enjoy our peace and tranquility. And, and therefore, and, and, and finally, and I think that is more important, 
people are now focusing on developmental issues. Okay. We are looking at corruption. We are looking at the blue economy instead of just politicking for politicking. All right. And uh, your thoughts, Michael Aguanda, as a governance consultant, are we now becoming more issue-based as a country as opposed to persons? I will say yes. However, the deputy president needed not to tell us what we already know. And any time we talk about an issue, it actually points us to the other direction. It is, that is very uneasy, and some people are actually taking the responsibilities. The deputy president should come out and tell us, I said we will be paid. Farmers will be paid next week. They have not been paid several months down the line. That one is issue-based not the position that he has constitutionally. And, and uh, just to remind you, Mike and our viewers, in, in this country we've had deputy president or the vice president that have never seen the light of the day. Uh, we know if you look at uh, the history of President uh, Moi, Moi, you know, will even say, uh, I appoint him if that is going to add food on, you know, on, on, on your table. table. We know that um, in the last government, uh, President Mwai Kibaki, uh, we had the deputy pre uh, vice president, um, Kalonzo Msioka, but Kimemia wields so much power than, than the deputy president himself. I mean, Uru also will be able to work with other people, not necessarily. But when you have a deputy president that travels, and I, I agree that is what he's supposed to do, everywhere and promises mountain and you don't see an anti-ill out of those mountains in terms of development and giving an example of this May scandal that is here. Now his own people are coming out and saying you are involved in the corruption in this in this May scandal and you, in, in, in the fertilizer as well. And, and so whatever you say when people are already developing a perception about you more so on what feeds them every day in a place where you come from then something is really wrong. Just the other day was in course and he said Said, man, you chase me in ODM, you're coming again you to chase me, me in Jubilee. Right. So you see, <laughs> when, when, we were, when we were looking at also personal audit here, his, his group of people came and said, of our dead body, this is not going to be done because it's not constitutional. While the president was talking about it, they were saying something else. So when he's coming out and he's thinking that he's being threatened now, he's in own position, other deputy president or vice president has been threatened before. And, 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 and then they worked very softly until they concluded their term. So I really don't think if you're deputy president and you're constitutionally mandated to do certain tasks, that the president will not be able to assign we'll another assign individual that. or get into an agreement with other people because you're the person who is supposed it is relationship. And mm. besides that, it's also what you are able to do as a All right, Michael Aguanda will have to wind it up right there. That's Michael Aguanda, governance expert, and Senator Irungo Kangata, who's the deputy whip in the Senate. And that's the way it is. For now, we are going to wind up that conversation right about there. But do stay with us right here on KTN News. We have more.